Hello, I'm Stephen Rakusik with South Dakota Public Broadcasting. I'm Dale Drogi, professor of biology at Dakota State University. And today we're going to dissect the cow eye. Yeah, you can either use the scalpel to make a slight incision or you can go in with uh, the scissors and just poke in. But you want to poke into the middle of the eye here, kind of, you know, kind of halfway, kind of like the equator if it were a globe. And then you just use scissors to extend that cut around. How deep do you want to go here? You don't want to, you really can't damage too much, but you, you know, kind of like you're cutting a, a piece of paper, you want to keep it, the bottom part of the scissors up against the, the body, the scleral wall. And if you just keep cutting, you know, it's, it's pretty easy cut. Mm -hmm. Your scissors are sharper than these anyway. <laughs> and go all the way around. You said there's no way of really messing up too much if you're in this section. I don't section. think so. What happens I, if you're you could, farther towards the front? Is there yeah, any? you don't want to. Yeah, you kind of want to stay in the middle. You want to stay away from. There's some structures, the ciliary body, and such that you'd really like to stay away from. So let me make that last cut. I know we have some more information on this on the oh, absolutely yeah on the website too. There'll be photos and stuff that'll go along with this. Anyway, so here things are, and if you cut the eye and then you just open it up. I can hold it here for you. Okay, there. just open that up like that. I think I'll use a pair of forceps here. And first of all, if you look here, you see this kind of oh, translucent, uh, almost flesh-colored layer here. You notice that's against the back of the eye. That's the retina. And so the retina has the photoreceptors. That's where the light is, you know, hits and is interpreted by the photosignals, the rods and the cones. Cones more for color vision, rods for black and white. And those signals then are, you know, the lights turned into electrical signals, which are transmitted into the optic nerve. So the retina is nervous tissue. It is continuous with the optic nerve. And you can see how you might get a detached retina. The retina is not very securely, you know, it's not, it's not attached in any way to the inside of the eyeball. Instead, it just spreads around that. And it's, you know, uh, so it can, and it's the only place it is attached is at the optic nerve. And at that point, is there Yeah, that's called or? the optic disc, and there are no photos. So this, can maybe turn the light right there. That, that right where the, right where the um, optic nerve comes in, that's called the optic disc, and there are no photoreceptors there. So that's actually sometimes called the blind spot. And your brain sort of compensates for that. So only when you do special tests do you just discover that there's this little spot here where you don't have, have vision. All right. So go ahead and just kind of pull it here, or should I? Yeah, and then we can, well, say so here, and then extending, you might, obviously, you'll, you'll, students will notice immediately is the eyes full of this big, clear, jelly-like substance. This is called the um, vitreous humor, and so it fills the inner part of the eyeball and mainly helps the eyeball keep its shape, so mm -hmm. things are. So light is transparent, light passes right through that, and so you probably want to just kind of pull that out of there. It's kind of... Kind of like a jelly-like Yeah, it's very here. jelly-like, and it, it, it does kind of want to hang on, so you kind of pull it all out of there. There it goes. Mm. Boop. And so it's kind of gloopy, and things are. And now we can see some other structures in there. Um, let's do the back first. You can see, you know, here's the retina, and if I uh, pull the retina down off of there a little bit, you can see that there's a dark layer there. This is the choroid coat. The next layer, and you can see that that layer is only loosely attached again to the um, sclera. And the choroid has richly supplied with blood vessels and things are, it provides nutrients to other parts of the eye. It's awful dark too. Any and it's dark and yeah, prevents light from scattering, getting reflected around. Now, interestingly though, and this is one difference between cow eyes and human eyes, is cows, cats, other mammals, have a shiny reflective layer in the back of their choroid. It's called the tapetum lucidum. And the tapetum lucidum then actually encourages or in, um, promotes the reflection of light rays. And so these animals have much better vision in low light situations. You know, we often say cats can see in the dark. Well, they can't see in literal darkness, but they can see much better in those kinds of low light situations, as can cows. It's also what's responsible for if you shine a flashlight in the eyes of a animal and you often you get that eye shine back you know that you see that reflection it's reflecting off of this bright tapetum lucidum layer in the back of the eye mm -hmm. so it's kind of an interesting feature yeah, so you would not see humans that, yeah would not see that in a human eye it would be totally dark anything else to see back um, here? I don't think there's too much you can see this kind of nice here you can see the scleroid coat on the outside it's tough and then you can see the the choroid this next layer in and then the th inner layer the innermost layer is the the retina so 
sclera um, choroid retina from outside to inside. And something like the books might have something about the fovea centralis or oh, macula. Yeah, like and you can't really see those. The fovea, fovea centralis is an area in the human eye that has a high concentration of, of cones, which allow for uh, very visual acuity, that for visual acuity and for color vision. And it tends to be an area where light tends to be focused a lot. But you, you know, it, it's such a small, it's such a structure you can't really see it with the naked mm -hmm. eye. But it would be on the retina then would be in a, an area with a lot of, of, of photoreceptors, cone photoreceptors. Okay. Should we move to the Yeah, front and if now? we go to the front part of the eye, whoops, here we go, Steve has it here. And of course, right away you notice this big spherical kind of thing sitting there in the middle, that's the lens. And so the lens focuses the light on the retina. And you can see in here it looks like a, you know, it's almost plastic. It is kind of at this point, um, it's a layers of membranes that are on, but it is a living tissue. And it's situated right in that opening, and it's attached to these ciliary processes or these the ciliary body, these striations here. And so it's those muscles in the ciliary process that can change the shape of the lens. And you may, you know, if you said, you know, the lens is, in life, the lens is a much more flexible structure and the, you know, the, or the muscles can pull and change the shape, which allows your eye to accommodate for near and far kinds of things or movement and things in the light and change the focus. So, I think at this point we can, we can just pull that out, and I think we'll have a close-up you can see the suspensory ligaments, but that lens kind of just pops right out of there, kind of a cool thing. And that lens, you know, you'll notice things are very hard, more hard now in, you know, in, in mm -hmm. preserve than it would be in life, but you can see it, you know, it'd be transparent, light could pass through it, but it's a, and it's not a perfect sphere, it has a little shape, you know, to, ref to refract the light and um, focus it right on the retina. This can become cloudy, is that right? Or yeah, and that, even in yeah, and that could become cloudy. You can lose, you know, the ability of the lens hmm. to, to focus light. I know some fluid just kind of pouring out. I'm going to pour that yeah, out here. Yeah, like yeah. Once we, once we pulled that lens out, there's a space, you know, maybe you can see, you know, there's, a, there's a space here between the lens and the cornea. So the cornea is on the outside and the inside. And that's called aqueous humor. And it's much more liquid than the, the jelly-like mm -hmm. vitreous humor. And it actually it supplies the nutrients or carries the nutrients to the various parts of the cornea and things like that. The cornea is a, another very tough tissue. It's, it's, it's connective tissue. And so it, it needs to be, it doesn't have blood vessels in it. It has to be, some, the nutrients have to come from other sources. And that is the aqueous humor. Okay. And again, from the back, we can see the, the, again, the, the striations of the ciliary body. And then right in here, right around this, this opening, this space is the pupil. And so that this pupil is the space there, light enters, comes through the lens. And of course, right around the pupil is the iris. And so this tissue here is the iris of the cow eye. It's not as colored as it is mm -hmm. in people. And that iris has muscles then that control how the diameter of the opening of the pupil. And so, you know, we're, we're familiar with this pupils dilating and pupils constricting. Under low light situations, your pupil opens up and so more light can get in. Under high light situations, bright light, your light, your pupils will contract, and yeah, this opening here will get smaller, so less light comes in and don't da and dam damage your eyes. And yeah, seeing this one's been pulled out. If you you know once you're once you've looked at all those structures, you can usually get. You now I say that. Okay, yeah, it's Sometimes you just got you got to find a place where it's loose. There it goes, and once you get that kind of loosened, you can then pull that out. I'll let you grab it there. The yeah, I probably better have it on my hand here. Not sure I have the right tool either, but and it tends to it tends to hang on the ciliary body. It almost looks like this the choroid's continuous with the ciliary body. There it looks like. Yeah, yeah, I believe yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And try to hold that. Where you can Very slippery. It. Yeah, <laughs> slippery, and you can see it. There it goes. But anyway, you can remove that, like the one that Steve has there, and the choroid. You can see here's the ciliary body extent, and it's continuous with the choroid. And then when you take that all out, there's you know the sclera is left. You can see where the you can see where the sclerous coat, the sclera, is continuous with the with the cornea. And now you can kind of see how transparent mm -hmm. that that cornea is. You can see my finger through it. That. So light enters, passes through the cornea, through the opening, the pupil, and through the lens, the lens then 
focuses the light on the retina, and then that those those signals are sent to the brain and interpreted as vision. So not, I mean, not really complicated, but yet it works fantastic. Yeah, as yeah, far it's, as it's, yeah, it's, it, 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 it works extremely well. And say the level of visual acuity that most vertebrates, in particular mammals, have is is, is amazing. And um, you know, we kind of, you know, we depend greatly on our our visual senses, probably more than most other mammals. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dale. And yeah, no, again, I'll great. remind you to also visit the website because we'll have additional photos, um, different diseases, conditions that affect the eyes. Yeah, we'll all be yeah, we're all very sensitive detail. to things that yep. uh, that happen to our eyes. Yeah, that'll be covered in detail on the website. So definitely check that out. And thanks again, Dale, so okay. much for coming Thank here today. My, my pleasure. Hello, I'm Stephen Rakusik with South Dakota Public Broadcasting. I'm Dale Drogi, Professor of Biology at Dakota State University. And today we're going to dissect the cow eye. Yeah, you can either use the scalpel to make a slight incision or you can go in with uh, the scissors and just poke in. But you want to poke into the middle of the eye here, kind of, you know, kind of halfway, kind of like the equator if it were a globe. And then you just use scissors to extend that cut around. How deep do you want to go here? You don't want to. You really can't damage too much, but you you know, kind of like you're cutting a, a piece of paper. You want to keep it the bottom part of the scissors up against the the body, the scleral wall. And if you just keep cutting, you know, it's it's pretty easy cut. Mm -hmm. Your scissors are sharper than these anyway. <laughs> and go all the way around. You said there's no way to really mess.